Hello everyone and welcome back to the bench. As you can see today we have an ICOM ID880H. This is a dual band ham radio with D-Star capability and it is a factory original radio which means it is set to ham frequencies. So in today's video we're going to show how to let it transmit out of band and of course we'll give the usual warning about how this may or may not be legal wherever you reside now where I'm from if we want to transmit on this particular frequency right here this is LAD1 and you can get a recreational license to do so uh, you fill out a form, you pay a price, and you can transmit on this. You are limited to 5 watts output for recreational use for this and the resource road channels in BC. Uh, there's also truckers that use these and they get commercial endorsements through companies that they work for. Um, in the US, you could be using the MERS, MURS frequencies if you are licensed for it. There's many reasons why you can legally do this. There's also reasons why you shouldn't. So it's your responsibility to know what you're doing here. And I'm going to leave it at that. So as you can see, this is a not a ham frequency. It is not in the two meter band for amateur radio use. And if I transmit, it just says off, does not work. So I'm going to show you how to let it work. All right, so now that the cover's off of the radio, you'll want to focus uh, where these two filters are. And even more so, next to these two filters, you'll see an array of diodes here. And on this radio, this is a North American version. Just getting all this fluff out of here. Uh, the North American version only has two diodes in place. Now, there's a whole bunch of empty spots here for different regions and different frequencies. If you remove these two and have them all removed, then that sets the radio up to be completely uh, wide-banded for receive and transmit. So we are going to remove these two here, and I'm just going to do that fairly crudely. Um, with my soldering iron, I'm just going to heat it up enough that I can knock it over. 
Um, you could just break them out if, if you don't have a soldering iron. I, I don't recommend that because you could rip up traces and cause other problems. But hot air would be the best solution here. But we're just going to use a soldering iron. All right, so we'll put just a little, a little bit of flux on there. I don't want to put that much on. Get some on my tweezers. So there's one, basically just heating it up on both sides, back and forth until it's hot enough it comes out. Which is pretty easy to do here because there's nothing else in the way. And now I have both of them here. I can remove. Then I'll use a bit of solder wick here. Just to clean up those contacts in case uh, anything kind of jumped over. And there you go. Now we have no worries about them being shorted out or anything. It's nice and clean. Um, just so you know, this little diode can stay. You don't have to worry about that one. Okay, so let's put it back together and do a bit of a test. All right, so back to our out of hand band frequency. Now I key it up. You can hear the fan spin. And you can also see we're putting out 42 watts. And our SWR isn't too bad. So that's one thing you guys really need to know about opening these up the biggest most important thing is that you got to make sure you tune your antenna for these new frequencies that you're using because your swr is going to change quite a bit these ham radio finals are nowhere near as good as the finals that are in a commercial radio the commercial radio finals are actually designed to go up to a 
12 to 1 mismatch on your S- SWR, which is why they're way more expensive than ham radios. The ham radio finals are, I think, a 3.5 to 4 worst case scenario ratio on your SWR um, before you fry it. So keep that in mind. There's a reason commercial radios are meant for these frequencies, there's a reason they're more expensive. Now, if you only want to use the radio in this band, you know, close to 154 or whatever, close to 170, wherever you're going to be transmitting mostly, then that's fine as long as you match your antenna to it and you never go back to those ham frequencies. But uh, for someone like me where I'm monitoring this frequency and I'm only doing quick little conversations here and there maybe then it's not too big of a deal just just keep an eye on that swr keep your transmissions short um if you're not gonna tune your antenna out of band so that's all i have to say about that um again do this stuff at your own risk you as the end user are responsible for what you do with these radios um, even if you're in the ham bands, you need a license to be a ham operator too. So it's it's your responsibility. And uh, if you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, have a good day. Catch you on the next one.